Tom Clancy's The Division as an open-world RPG looter shooter franchise isn't for everyone. Still, a large community of passionate gamers, including myself, formed around the first game, and this community grew even larger with the second game. Some loved the gameplay, others loved the story and lore. Although the launch of The Division 2 was considered a success, after roughly two months most people, including myself, lost interest in the game. Everyone had their own reasons, not enough story or lore, repetitive endgame content, boring PvP or a ridiculously difficult loot system. For me it was all of them, although I never cared too much for the PvP. But with the recent announcement of Tidal Update 8 and the new expansion Warlords of New York, Massive Entertainment have completely revamped the gameplay and expanded the story and open world based on player feedback. This includes an innovative progression system, a cohesive endgame experience, a new open world and an extended campaign. Whether you are a new player or a returning one, in this video I will be answering the following question. Should you play The Division 2 in 2020? The changes Massive made can be divided into two categories. Title Update 8, which is available to everyone that has the base game, and Warlords of New York, the paid expansion. Each one will have new and improved features which I'm covering in this order. First we're going over Warlords of New York with a new story, new open world, improved endgame which includes seasons, shade levels, legendary difficulty, global difficulty and directives. After that we'll talk about Title Update 8 which has some pretty big changes too, among which gear score 515, gear 2.0, recalibration changes, skill power changes and dark zone improvements. I'm going into detail on all of these features, so if you're looking for a quick summary and conclusion, follow the timestamp shown on screen. In Warlords of New York, we will travel to Lower Manhattan in New York City in the hunt for Aaron Keener and his posse of rogue agents in response to a recent biological attack on the Division headquarters that resulted in the death of numerous civilians and Shade agents. Aaron Keener and four of his rogue agents, each one with their own unique specializations, will group up with the cleaners and rikers and spread out over four sectors of the city. Our goal is to find what else Keener is planning and to put a stop to it. And along the way, the last man battalion, Black Tusk, White Tusk and Hunters will make an appearance too. If you want to know more about the story and lore of Warlords of New York, you can, besides subscribing for future content, check out the video in the top right. As mentioned, we will be introduced to a new map, Lower Manhattan, that's directly beneath Midtown Manhattan, the location of the previous game. The map that's about 25% of the map size of DC will introduce us to a summary Manhattan that has been devastated after the same hurricane that hit DC did so to New York. The map will be divided into four named zones, each home to one of the four rogue agents. Vivian Conley, Javier Kajika and the cleaners will respectively be holed up in the Two Bridges and Battery Park sector. James Dragov, Theo Parnell and the Rikers will respectively be found in the Financial District and Civic Center. We will have to find clues within each sector, investigate locations using echoes and capture control points, complete eight side missions and end up with five main missions, which are all linked together now. One for each of the lieutenants and eventually for Keener himself. Other than that, there will be a large number of collectibles too. Worth mentioning is that if you start this campaign, you won't be able to return to DC until you have completed it. For me, a lack of story and lore was one of the big reasons I stopped playing, especially as it is a big part of my channel, of course. This narrative seems not only to deliver us more lore, but also answer big questions that have been lingering since the start of the first game. That's very exciting and enough for me to return already, but there's more. I'm aware that many players are here for the gameplay, and once the campaign is over, you want to have something to play too. That is where the new endgame experience comes in, which includes shade levels, legendary difficulty, global difficulty directives, and the big one, seasons. Agent levels are now raised from 30 to 40, removing gear score in the process. Upon reaching level 40, the infinite progression system replaces the field proficiency system. Shade levels allow you to invest points into one of four distinct core attribute categories. Offense, defense, utility and miscellaneous. Once each of these four categories is maxed out, the shade level points can be spent into the fifth scavenging category, yielding credits and crafting materials. Each shade level will improve upon the next one visually, signifying the reaching of milestones to other agents. 
To increase the difficulty, level 40 agents will be able to select a legendary difficulty for the strongholds, Roosevelt Island, Capitol Building and District Union Arena. This is the most challenging PvE experience outside of the raid, introducing a new elite sub-faction of Black Tusk, which is called the White Tusk. Affecting the difficulty of the open world, you can now increase the difficulty up to heroic, affecting control points, bounties, as well as missions. After completing it, you can reset the map to retake the map again as control points won't be taken back anymore. Another way to spice up your gameplay independently from global difficulty are directives. Directives allow you to activate gameplay modifiers on main missions, side missions and other open world activities, increasing the overall difficulty and granting you additional XP. You will be able to activate up to 5 directives, scaling up the XP reward multiplier for each one active. It includes the next 5 directives, ammo orders, cool skills, fog of war revisited, no regen and special ammo. Last and most interesting of all our seasons. After reaching level 40, each 3 months long, a season will task you to hunt down rogue agents and earn unique rewards within a certain narrative context of the game. The rewards will consist of new skill mods and seasonal gear and cosmetics and are obtained by progressing through the seasonal reward track. There is a calendar of in-game activities that ensures new activities to play on a weekly basis including seasonal manhunt targets, global events, leagues, apparel events and season events. Seasonal manhunt targets are rogue agents aided by their local network that takes place across a large and varied set of locations in both New York City and DC. Step by step, targets become available throughout the season and finishing the manhunt results in a unique skill mod that was used by that particular target. Global events, similarly to the ones from the previous game, add new types of challenges never before seen in The Division 2, while leagues give players with a more competitive attitude a go-to area to check their standing. Not much else is known about these two features at the moment, but more information will come soon. You can now progress through the season by gaining season levels, up to 100 to be exact. According to Massive, every 30 to 60 minutes of gameplay results in a level without additional XP modifiers. But those that wish to optimize their leveling efficiency will be able to do so by completing seasonal activities or participating in XP multiplier events. In order to gain additional rewards, you can purchase a season pass, unlocking a premium track of gear from that season's loot table, seasonal apparel, apparel keys, crafting materials and way more. To keep it fair, all gameplay affecting rewards are only on the main track and not on the premium track. These changes have been a direct result of player feedback to make the game feel rewarding for both players that play an hour per week or 50 hours. And progressing through the end game should now be satisfying for everyone, although it's up to you if you care for these rewards. Moving on to title update 8, which is the free update for everyone. If you don't have the expansion, you won't be able to level up to level 40, but the maximum gear score will increase to 515. In comparison to the progression system of Warlords of New York, it seems like a participation trophy, although the upcoming changes will definitely make up for it. Gear 2.0 improves upon the loot system, aiming to make it easier to understand and more rewarding. Most notable are the UI improvements that show you at a glance if an item you pick up improves upon the one you're wearing. Attributes were already color-coded depending on whether they would fit to offense, defense or utility. But now it shows the improvement in percentages or points and using a bar it shows how much an attribute can still improve. Items, both gear and weapons, can now have god rolls, allowing them to potentially drop with maxed out attributes in all areas, which should make looting and creating builds much more rewarding. Current brand sets will be reworked and new brand sets, gear sets, weapons and exotic items will be added. Current brand sets will be reworked so their brand set bonuses better fit common playstyles and each item will have a core attribute that complements that brand set. The other attributes and talents will still be random to my knowledge at least. Gear sets and exotic items will also be revamped, although it's not yet known in what way exactly. Talents will be more powerful and build defining and their requirements have been removed, meaning you aren't limited to having over or under a certain amount of offensive, defensive or utility roles. Mod slots have been redistributed and are now linked to specific gear slots. So for example, only a backpack can have two mod slots, one being utility and one being offense. This was already the case, but they changed on what items this will be, making it a bit more logical. 
New items, as in brand sets, gear sets, weapons and exotics, will be added including the Hanayu Corporation, Grupo Sombra SA, Golden Gear brand sets and the System Corruption gear set. Also, a few exotic weapons have been shown, although we don't know the names. Between the improved UI, god rolls, revamped and new gear and weapons, I think looting and creating builds should both be easier and rewarding again. A huge part of the game that changing for the better. So if that's one of the reasons you left, it's a good thing if you come back, even if you don't buy the expansion. Directly tying into gear 2.0 are the changes to recalibration. You can now extract item talents and attributes from any item, both gear and weapons, and store them permanently in your recalibration library. This will destroy the item that you're extracting it from, but if you manage to find a higher roll, you can replace the one already stored at any time, which will be clearly indicated by the UI. Once you have an attribute, you can use it indefinitely, although you can still only recalibrate once per item. This will make it so rewarding to hunt for those best attributes and talents to collect them all like Pokemon Go, and in turn it will make creating builds way easier. With those changes, I can't leave out the changes to skill power. Requirements on skill mods would greatly limit anyone trying to effectively use a skill build, making them pretty pointless. That's gone. Skill mods no longer will have requirements for skill power, meaning you can simply put on the best mods and improve your skills. Skill power will be replaced with skill tiers, six of them to be exact. Each item with the skill tier core attribute will add one tier, directly boosting a skill's effectiveness. On top of that, there is an overcharge mechanic that paired with gear and exotic talents can now overcharge a skill, greatly increasing its effectiveness for a short duration. Lastly, many players were disappointed in the dark zone and how PvP worked. This is all going to change, mostly changing it back to the way the dark zone used to be. Ray rogue status is removed, simplifying the rogue mechanic. Dark zone XP is now obtainable in three ways, player to player interactions, successful extractions and a collection of supply drops. If you happen to interact with other players, you can obtain a new Dark Zone currency by stealing or killing them. What you can buy with this currency is unknown, so we don't know how much it exactly is worth, but you probably thought of something for that. Items are now visible before extraction, allowing you to see if it's worth to steal it. All Dark Zone loot is now contaminated, meaning you must extract it, and there are a bunch of other smaller changes. All these changes together basically make the Dark Zone high risk, high reward again. Although I don't think we can return to the feeling of the old Dark Zone as this was just one big zone and still we have three separate Dark Zones. So this is kind of an in-between change. It will improve, but perhaps not as much as people want it to. Which brings us to the conclusion. Whether you were into the lore, playing with friends sometimes, PvP Dark Zone or hardcore and game grinding, the new expansion has something for everyone. If you're a narrative-driven player that originally fell in love with the game's lore, but lost interest after the lack of story content, I would recommend returning to the game and to purchase the Warlords of New York expansion. If, for whatever reason, you don't want to or you can't purchase it, you can be sure that I'll upload everything about the lore of the expansion. So I got you covered in that area. If you're a PvE-driven player that loved the constant progression, grinding for gear and optimizing builds, but got held back because of the lacking loot and build system, as well as the unrewarding content, I would recommend returning to or buying the base game at least. The expansion will add a lot of progression and endgame activities and rewards, so if you're a semi-dedicated player, I would buy it, but if you only play it for an hour a week, maybe not so much, and title update 8, which of course is free, available to everyone, adds a lot. If you're mostly a PvP driven player that loved the original Dark Zone for its relentless gameplay and high risk, high reward gameplay against other players, I would recommend returning to the base game. The expansion doesn't deliver too much in terms of PvP content, at least for now. But if you're multiple or all of these players, which you probably are, both interested in the lore, PvE and PvP, I would immediately return to the game and purchase the expansion. You can purchase the base game Tom Clan's Division 2 for $9.99 on Uplay or the Ubi Store. If you're looking to purchase the Warlords of New York expansion, it's currently $29.99 on Uplay. But you can get a 20% discount if you have 100 Uplay points. I'm afraid I don't know the prices for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, because it depends on the retailer you're buying from. Title Update 8 and Warlords of New York will release on March 3rd, 2020. And a day before, on March 2nd, there will be patch notes detailing everything. I'm mostly a narrative and progression driven player so I have already bought the expansion. I'm mostly playing together with my brother at the moment and we're enjoying the grind again. In my opinion gaming in general but the Division 2 specifically is much more enjoyable when you do it together. So if you're still looking for people to play with feel free to join the discord and play with a very passionate community. 
Congratulations if you made it to the end of the video, you are an absolute legend. I tried to keep it as informative and short as possible, but it's still quite a lengthy video. If you liked the video or if it helped you, please leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. If it's the latter, let me know how I can improve in the comments down below. I'm mostly a game lore channel with a focus on Division 2 at the moment, but also for games like Modern Warfare and The Last of Us Part 2. So if you're interested in similar content, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, let me know if you're still playing the game, we'll return to the game and if you will buy the expansion. Hopefully I'll see you in Manhattan and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.